I, ha- I literally have two Bibles today, so we're going to declare a double portion over the word today. Um, I brought two Bibles because I've really been getting into the um, Amplified Bible. Does anybody else read the Amplified? I like the Amplified a lot, but it takes so much longer to read. It's like if you're doing like a reading plan and you normally get finished in 30 minutes, if you read the Amplified, it's 50. And so you just have to be careful reading the Amplified because you might be in prayer all morning long. Uh, But it's so good and it's so descriptive. And I thought to myself that I might read the scripture from the Amplified today and maybe also in the ESV. I normally read from ESV, but if you have your Bible um, or you have the app, if you don't mind to open it up, we're going to be turning to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to talk just a little bit today about what now. That's, That's the title of the message is what now, because like we're back. And, you know, in some sense, we're back in some sense. For those of you guys who are watching today, like what? Not fair. I did not know that I could come to church today. Well, you couldn't. And I'm sorry about that. We love you. It's just staff and the people who needed to be here to make this work. We are going to allow some more leaders in the room over the next few weeks, a few more volunteers over the next few weeks. And the very first Sunday of July, we're going to be opening and opening the church up to larger gatherings. So I just want you to stay tuned and be ready. We'll get you some more information about that. But um, that's what we've decided up until this point. Check in with the team. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's awesome. Amazing. Well, I know you cannot wait. Uh, I cannot wait. I know you guys can't wait. We're going to have our family back in the room, back together, and it's going to be so powerful and so special. So I love all the memes that you guys have been posting about what church is going to be like when we uh, finally get back together. Just set that expectation. It's going to be bananas, revival. Um, So how many of you guys in the room, like you feel like we're leaving a bunker? (laughs) It's like... You know, I was thinking about what to talk about this week, and I was like, man, I'm reminded of when we went in, and now I'm thinking about us going out. And I was reminded of the scripture that says, you're blessed and you're going in, and you're going to be blessed and you're coming out. You guys remember that one, right? You're going to be fruitful and you're going in, and you're going to be fruitful and you're going out. And so I want to, I want to proclaim that over us as a church, and because I really believe that. I really believe that. I was having a conversation this week, and this was so surreal to me because this man has been a hero of mine for so many years, Frank DiMazio. We were talking, and he said, it is no surprise to me that your church has been thriving in the midst of COVID. And I said, well, I said, Papa Frank, because, you know, I always address fathers as Papa, and he thought that was hilarious. He was like, no one's ever called me that before. And I'm like, well, that's pretty much going to be your name when you come to Legacy. It's going to be Papa Frank, so just get ready, you know. And he was like, it's no surprise to me that Legacy has been thriving in the quarantine. And the reason I say that is because I've noticed that healthy, what's been healthy has gotten healthier. And what's sick has gotten sicker. So whatever aspects of the ministry that you've noticed, like, This has gotten healthier. This has gotten sicker. Like, be mindful of that because God has given you the opportunity to diagnose what's happening in your environment. And you're going to come out of this thing healthier than you went in. Believe that in Jesus' name. Because God wants his church to be healthy. Do you guys agree? Amen. Well, how do, we, how do we get healthy? That's not at all the topic of my conversation today. But if I were to start and be forced to do a quick keynote about what does it take to have a healthy church, you know where I would start? Prayer. <laughs> Pray, all right? First point of the message. That's just the introduction. But we need to be praying. Um, how many of you guys, this is so good that I get to ask questions. I'm not used to this. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Say, how many of you guys in the room remember the message that I did called a priest and a plague? You guys remember that? Um, The the day, that was like our very first uh, day at church in quarantine. And I remember when um, I was preparing to preach on that, it was like all night long I was wrestling in my sleep. I was like tossing and turning. You guys know like when you're in that place of like in between, you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. I'm, no, I'm asleep. It's a dream. No, no, no. I'm just having an odd thought. You know, you're like, oh, is this a vision? Or did I eat 
a burrito last night. You know, you're trying to figure out and discern, is it the voice of the Lord? Is it my imagination? And I remember the Lord speaking to me. Looking back, I, I feel that it was the Lord speaking to me. And I felt like he was saying, this has been held back to the extent that people have prayed. And I think, man, we have a hard time with that theology these days. We do. But if you've never read the book Intercessor by Reese Howes, I want to encourage you guys to pick that up because he was God's prayer warrior in the midst of World War II. You just read it, right? And there were so many like detailed instances that he could track uh, to times he spent in prayer to breakthrough happening in the world. You just, re- you just read it, right? Because uh, uh, Brighton's getting ready to go to Harvest School today. Let's go. Iris Global Harvest School. Um, so cool. And so I remember hearing that, and I'm like, God, that's kind of a hard word. Because even though um, we, we really can't change a whole lot, God can change so much. And one of the things that I remember, we had read this book. We read this book, Rick. It was called uh, Spiritual Leadership. Right? What, what was that guy's name who wrote that? He was awesome. Who, whatever. He's dead. He's dead, I think. So, Oswald Sanders. So, we honor him in Jesus' name. He's not offended that we forgot his name because he's, he's with the Lord. Um, but I, I, it was something, Rick, you may have to help me with this. And I know you don't know where I'm going. So, but um, I remember he was saying, like, I can't control God through my prayers. But I can, I can talk to God, and then God can, like, control the outcome of what I pray about. You remember that? Or are you just, you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said that, yes. Amen. Um, but it, it really does make a difference. Like we were saying when we, we were up here worshiping, is that, that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Like, that's the King James, right? Like, it always makes a difference when we pray. And one of the things that I kept thinking about as I was preparing for coming out of the bunker uh, was I was just asking myself, and I love to do this, like, God, have I been obedient to your invitation? You know, have I picked up the mantle of prayer as you have asked me to pray? Have I really interceded for people? Have I really allowed in that place of prayer for my heart to break for the people that you want to touch? And and that's one of the things that I, I just... You know, has has really destroyed me in the midst of so much happening right now in our world, like the news cycles and uh, you know the, the 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 peaceful protest and the and the violent riots and all all of the stuff that's happening right now in the world is like, you know, everybody's like, oh, I'm praying. You know, those folks are in my thoughts and in my prayers. But the thing that I feel convicted by is like, has any of this have I allowed God's thoughts? And God's emotions to break my heart for those people. Like, am I praying to the extent and and with the power that God has called me to pray with? You guys get what I'm saying? I never ramble on screen, but I get to right now because you're stuck. And, and like, no one's going to leave because it's all on film. Um, but I, <clears throat> I want to tell you about an experience I had, and then we're going to read Matthew 6. I was in, uh, and this is great, Keys is going, this is beautiful. Um, I, was, I was invited to go and, and, and preach for a youth group at a retreat in Gatlinburg. I was living in Kentucky at the time, but they invited me down. And it was this big cabin, there was all these kids there. And I went over to the corner to pray just a little bit before I shared. And I don't know what it was, but I was just feeling overwhelmed about what I was going to share about, in a good way. And, and I was just I was just pouring my heart out to the Lord. And I remember I said something to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I just want to I want to lay my head on your shoulder and just cry. <laughs> I'm a four on the Enneagram, so you'll get it. Three wing four, probably. And, and, I, and I'm just like, I want to lay my head on your shoulder and cry. And uh, I, 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 I felt like I heard the Lord respond to me and say, who's going to give me a shoulder to lay my head down and cry? I mean, that is, that's different, right? Because we often think about, well, I'm going to pour out my prayer. You know, I'm going to let my request be made known. And that's one dimension of prayer. And I think it's awesome when we share our emotions with God in prayer. But prayer warriors, are we willing to allow God to share his emotions with us in prayer? 
You know, it's one thing to be like, here's my emotions. I'm going to dump them all on. It's at your feet now. Clean it all up. You're the best. Hallelujah. I'm victorious. I'm a son, and I'm rolling into my day now. But, but who are the prayer people? Who are the presence people who are going to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him pour out? That's just a thought. I mean, really, though, right? You, you all watching the news. You flip through social media. It gives you anxiety, I'm sure, like it does me. I can't even hardly get on social media right now. Like, I get on for five minutes. I'm like, I'm exhausted, man. Like, I'm hurting. I'm sad. You know, like, I'm going through the core emotions. I'm like, ah, I don't know what to feel. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just asking God in prayer, like, am I feeling what you're feeling? You know? Because I just, I get the sense that if I am possessed by the heart of God, then the power of God will never be a problem. You know what I mean? Because I'll do it His way. Not do it my way and just try to legislate His power. Oh, I'm praying a lot. I'm praying a lot. I'm praying a lot. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. And He's like, yeah, but if you just did it my way, it'd take you less time. You know, if you just spend a little time in the anointing, if you just spend a little time getting to that place to where it's all about what I want rather than you play, praying like what you think should happen in the world, then it would be so much more effective. I, I remember in Africa, Mama Heidi always saying, 20 minutes in the anointing is so much more powerful than 20 years in ministry. And I'm like, whoa. You know, that is a, that's crazy talk, man. But the truth is, our prayers in that place are so much more effective than anything that we could do on our own or in our own strength. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about prayer today. And we sang um, our Father, which is where I'm going. And I want to read Matthew 6, chapter 5, verse 13, 5 through 13. Um, Matthew 6, verse 5 through 13 it says this. Also, when you pray, everybody say, when you pray. You, you notice that Jesus, this is the Sermon on the Mount, we can't forget that, that Jesus supposes that all of us will be praying. Just let that marinate for a minute, church, right? Like, Jesus supposes that as he comes to us on a daily basis, because Jesus doesn't miss a day coming to his kids. He's coming to check up on you every single day, right? Like he loved to walk with our first parents, Adam and Eve, in the cool of the day every single afternoon, right? He wants to take a walk with you. He's still trying to take a walk with you on the daily. You do know that, right? Like Jesus doesn't just like vacation at your house like three days a month. You know what I'm saying? Like he wants to come and find you every day. And so Jesus is like, hey, when you pray, when you pray today... <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get through this with people in the room. I haven't preached for so long. Uh, verse 5, it says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Okay, well, what is, a, what is a hypocritical prayer? For they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogues, a.k.a. church, and on the corners of the streets, a.k.a. social media, so that they may be seen by men. I assure you, and, and when Jesus says he assures us, I'm pretty sure uh, he's going to follow through. And most solemnly say to you, meaning this is very serious and true, they already have their reward in full. Man, if we choose to pray for the attention of men, the only reward we'll receive will be the attention of men. And we live in a culture that is obsessed with attention. And it's, it, it, it is, we need to repent for where we have craved the attention of people more than we've craved the attention of God. But some of us have been willing to trade in anointing, oil that we buy in prayer for influence that we can get online. Oh man, we're going deep already. Let's go here. Um, it's the Amplified, I told you. It, it just stretches things out. Um, but here it is. But when you pray, go into your most private room and then close the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees 
what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, praying as they do. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. We all know this. Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And here's what the Amplified says about that. Letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, could I just throw in an extra? Okay, verse 14 and 15, just because we're here. For if you forgive others their trespasses, here's what the Amplified says, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, here's what the Amplified says, nurturing your hurt and your anger, with the result that it interferes with your relationship with the Father, then your Father will not forgive you your trespasses. My God. Gee, that's a, dro- a mic drop moment. Like the Lord could have ended the Sermon on the Mount right there. So, Lord, we just ask you, God, to teach us to pray. You know, I, I, I genuinely mean that, church, this morning. As, as, as I, I am praying for you, I'm praying for us that Jesus himself would instruct our prayers. That he would begin to teach us how to pray. Uh, just like I feel that he spoke to me when we kicked this whole season off. This has been held back to the extent that people have prayed. We need to be consistent and constant in returning to prayer. And so, Lord, we ask you, Lord, turn our hearts to be a prayerful people, to be a presence people, just like we've been talking about, God, that we'd hold your attention, that we'd be aware of what the Spirit is doing and be aware of what God is speaking. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Just stay, bro. Just stay. We're just hanging today. Is that cool? Are you cool with it? Yeah. You haven't been here. We haven't been together for a long time, so your hands are like, they're strong, right? Strong and rested. So this is great. So, um, you know, what I love about this is like, you know, how often, no matter how long you've been living for the Lord, have you forgotten how to pray? I mean, genuinely, right? You're like, I just don't know how to pray anymore. I just, I I sit down to pray and I get bored. And, And the good news is, is that we can always, we can always return to Jesus's method of how to approach God. You know, the Bible says to approach the throne of grace boldly, not flippantly. Right? And I know not everybody wants to hear that because they're like, what are you talking about? Like, Jesus is just my friend. Well, Jesus is your friend, but he's also your Lord. Right? There's a healthy fear of the Lord that we have. There's a reverence that we have with God, right? And there is a way to approach God. There was a very succinct way to approach God in the Old Testament. And if you did it wrong, you died. Now, thankfully, Jesus died so that if we approached him incorrectly in the New Testament, we would not physically die, but we would get the opportunity to repent and come to a place of acknowledging how powerful and big he is, right? So um, Jesus gives us a, a, he gives us a methodology, he gives us a framework for approaching God, and he also teaches us how to pray. Now, before we get to that, we see the type of prayers that God rejects. And we see the type of prayers that God receives. So just real quick, and I, I, I think this just, it, it's worth noting that God rejects two type of prayers. Number one is boasting prayers. And number two is babbling prayers. I want, I want to hit on the second one first, all right? Babbling prayers, right? Remember what Isaiah said? Isaiah said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Right? God doesn't need our wor- words nearly as much as He wants our hearts. So you don't have to come to the Lord with all these words. It doesn't have to be flashy or fancy. You don't have to be thinking about, like, you know, man, if I was on Instagram Live, how would I be praying? You know, it just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, if you're bringing your whole heart, that's what God wants. 
That's what he wants. Um, and so he, he does not need our, our babbling prayers. Uh, the type of prayer God receives is, is a transparent pray, prayer from the heart. But here, here's the second thing. And I, I, the reason why I, I mentioned this first because it's in the scripture first. But the reason I'm saying it last now is because I want to add a bit of emphasis to it. The type of prayer that God rejects is boasting prayers. Uh, none of us should presuppose that we know better than God how the world needs to be ran. I mean, yeah, right? Because we, we live in a world right now where people have some very strong opinions, right? This needs to happen. That needs to happen. That person needs to resign. This person needs to be promoted. That per, you know, it's like all, there's a lot of judgments. And people are speaking with a lot of finality. And I'm not saying that you can't be surely certain. But you know when you're allowed to be surely certain? When you're quoting scripture. <laughs> Aside from that, calm down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is that. Well, have you prayed? Well, I know. You're 22. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, I, or I'm 35. You're 35. You know, I don't presuppose that I know how the world needs to be ran. What I believe is that God knows how he wants the world ran. You know what I mean? And I need to hear from God. I need to pray. God does not hear boasting prayers. You guys remember this. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Right? And so when you pray to be seen, God doesn't listen. And you can kind of just write that down. When you pray to be seen, God doesn't listen. Don't pray to be seen by people. Pray to be seen by God. So uh, how is it that we should be praying right now? That, that, that's the question I want to pose to you this morning is, how is it that we should be praying right now? I, I'll say this. Um, it, it is the Lord's Prayer. If you don't know how to pray, pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray it every single day. You can easily pray for an hour praying the Lord's Prayer. I promise you, you can. You really can. It, it may seem challenging at first. You're like, man, there's no way I could pray for an hour. If you pray, I promise you, you pray the Lord's Prayer, you pray for an hour. Easy. And if not, just come do a prayer walk with me. I can't promise that we'll keep it under an hour, but we will get through the Lord's Prayer eventually. Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven. Okay, our Father who is in heaven. So what is the first part? Our Father. This right here is a prayer of faith. Because we're saying, I believe in the Father. I believe in God. I believe that there is a God who is in heaven, right? And so not only are we saying, our Father who is in heaven, but we're also saying, holy is your name. So not only is it a prayer of faith, but it's also a prayer of worship, right? And I want you guys to notice that there is not a singular uh, personal pronoun all throughout the Lord's Prayer. Everything is communal. You know what I'm saying? Everything is family. Everything is like, it's us. It's our Father, not my Father. You know, and if you, I grew up Pentecostal. So Charismatics, we're all about the my encounter, right? We don't care what you're doing on the left. We don't care what you're doing on the right. We're going to get an encounter with the Lord. You know what I mean? We're closing our eyes. Whoa! Smacking people, you know, coming through with our banners, hitting people, at, you know. It's like we literally just don't care about anybody but us and the Lord. And there's some beauty in that, but there's also a little bit too much independence in that at times. <laughs> our Father! I want to encounter God, but I want you to encounter God too. I want to encounter God, but I want you to encounter God as well. Right? And so our Father. It's an, I'm coming to the Lord. It's not my Father, but it's our. It's, an, it's, a, it's acknowledging the fact that we're a part of a family and that we've all been adopted into the same family. Church, we are of one blood, not one opinion. That's one of the things we need to remember. We're of one blood, especially right now. Not one opinion. We can have a hundred different... I don't know how many people are in the room. We can all have a different opinion. We do. That's fine. But we all have one blood. Acts 17 teaches us that, right? And that comes from our Father. And we say, God, you are holy. As we talked about a moment ago, the fear of the Lord. It's good that as we approach God, we're saying, you're my dad. And so we have intimacy and we're connected, and we're close, and I'm safe here, but let me not neglect the fear of the Lord, and let me not uh, forget to mention that you're holy. You're holy, Lord. 
you're holy. You're holy God. And that's, I'm not playing around here. I'm very serious about this. Do you ever think about um, whenever God chose to name his spirit, why he said, here, here's what I'm going to name my spirit. I'm going to name my spirit the love spirit. Right? I, we got the father, the son, and the, and the love spirit. Because that's what we all like that. We all like love. We all like, oh, I want to feel, feel fuzzy and lovey-dovey and comfortable and very, very taken care of. Right? I, no, no, no. We got the Father, the Son, and we got the, the Spirit of Grace. You know, or how about, you know, for the, all the Pentecostals, the Spirit of Power. Fire. But no, when God chose to name His own Spirit... He said, it's going to be the Father, and it's going to be the Son, and then here's how you're going to, this is my spirit. The Holy Spirit, the primary characteristic that I want you to acknowledge about me when you come before me is not that that I'm loving, but I am. Not that I'm graceful, I am. Not that I'm powerful, I am. But don't you forget, I am holy. I am not like you. My thoughts are far above your thoughts. My ways are far above your ways. You know, don't come to me with this overly familiar, God's just my homie sort of thing. Like, no, no, he is the creator of the universe. The earth that you live on is his footstool. Like, he put you here. He created you out of dust and breath. Like, it's important that we acknowledge who we're talking to when we're going into prayer. It's, it's not a medium. It's not a psychic. It's not somebody who can help you if you do good enough. This is the God of all gods. (laughs) King of all kings. Lord of all lords. Now, think about how loved you are and how much favor you carry that you have his ear. I don't have favor. I'm not rich. You can talk to God. You are very favored. I don't have favor. I don't have a great job. You can literally talk to God. Like, how much favor? (laughs) There's no more favor than that. Like, you literally have the full-on attention of God. If you've ever been tempted, I am not favored. Whisper the name of Jesus and feel the presence rush into your car in the midst of your heart being completely broken and see if you don't carry favor. Because the God of the universe loves you so much that you saying, my dad. Woo. There's the Pentecostal part. Right? What's the next part? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a prayer of two things as well. It's a prayer of expectation. Because we say, your kingdom's coming, Lord. We expect something greater than what we're currently experiencing. Your kingdom's coming, Lord. But this is also a prayer of submission. Because we're saying, not my will, but your will be done. Not what I want out of this out of this life, but what you want. Not what I want out of the current cultural climate, but what you want. But what you want. Not my will, but your will. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've already acknowledged that God lives in heaven, right? We did that to start. Our Father who is in heaven. Well, when we pray for God's kingdom to come, we have to ask ourselves, what is happening in heaven? Right? What is happening in heaven? What kind of environment is going on up there? What, what's the atmosphere happening around the throne? Like, is there anybody poor? Is there, you know, is there anybody broke? Is there anybody sick? Is there anybody with cancer? Is there any racist people? No. Like, so if we're like, hey, kingdom come. We're expecting God's going to heal racism. We're expecting God's going to heal cancer. We're expecting God's going to transform every single thing that the kingdom invades. Because whenever heaven comes, it's the superior reality. It takes over. You you guys with me on the couch today. I hope you're having French toast. That's what I make every day. I hope you're saying amen in between bites. Let's go. Let's go. We should have had some French toast here this morning. Should do that next Sunday. Remember this, church. Heaven is the standard for what we're looking to build. When we talk about changing the world, right? We're like, we're going to change the world. We're not making that up as we go along. 
Like when we say, we're going to change the world, we're not changing the world on the basis of our preferences. We're going to change the world on the basis of my culture and my style. It's like, no, no. We're going to change the world on the basis of co-laboring with the Holy Spirit that brings the culture of the kingdom of heaven to the kingdom of earth. And that's how we're going to change the world. Like, we're not actually voting. We live in a democracy, not in the New Jerusalem. You see what I'm saying? That's it. That's governed differently. We don't have time to get too deep into that. Let's go to the next one. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Notice this. It doesn't say give me today my daily bread. I want, I want my breakthrough. I want my provision. I want my sustenance. I want. It's not talking about praying greedy prayers. It's talking about praying a daily prayer. Right? This is all the stuff I want. It's not about being ambitious. It's about praying for simple requests. It's like, this is what I need. And notice, notice that it is our bread. It is our nourishment. It is our blessing. It is our sustenance. Once again, we're coming into prayer with the reality that we're not just praying on behalf of ourselves, but we're praying on behalf of our families. We're praying on behalf of our kids. We're praying on behalf of our city. We're praying on behalf of the next generation. We're praying on behalf of our legacy. Right? It's, it's so interesting to me how the Lord's, Lord's Prayer cuts at the core of independence and selfish ambition and my four and no more type of mindset and an isolated Christianese bubble that says we're just going to look out for our own and we're just going to take care of the people who look like us and we're just going to look out for those who believe like us. No, it's, it's about taking responsibility. And it's about taking responsibility first and foremost in that place of prayer. And so if you know what you need, ask for it. This is a prayer of petition. We're asking for what we need. We're asking for what God would show us that we need today to complete the assignment that he has placed upon our lives. That's what we're asking for what we need. Uh, Next, I'm running through these here. You guys doing good in the room? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. This is about confession and compassion. This is part of our daily prayer is that we confess our sin. We confess where um, things we're igno- we, we acknowledge and we're aware of and things that we're unaware of. We ask the, we ask the Holy Spirit, search our hearts, God. Search my heart. I'm not... I'm not I'm not arrogant to the extent that I believe that I've been able to skate through the day without sinning. Or without grieving your spirit at some point. Or without listening to what you would suggest or say or command even. And ignoring it. In the name of grace. Forgive us our sins. Um, man, I feel like, guys, I, I, I know you wouldn't believe this because I'm a pastor. So you expect me to be incredibly holy. But you know how many times I'm out in public and the Holy Spirit, it's not like a command. It's like just a suggestion. Hey, you know, do that. I ain't got time to do that, Lord. Does that happen to you too? Ever? No, none of you guys. You guys are all super obedient. (laughs) Except for Kristen. She she amen to me. No, I I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. But there's so many times I feel like that happens. And I brush it off in the name of grace. Ah, it's fine. It's totally fine. I don't actually have to do that. But I think the intimacy comes not when you're just obedient to God's commands, but when you lead into God's suggestions. You know, where it's not just, I have to do this. It's the law. That's what God said. That's what the Bible says. But you're walking in union with the Spirit so that each and every time you fail to acknowledge what He is pushing you to do, you repent. You just repent. Repent for the little things. Could I suggest that to you today, church family? Just even repent for the little things. Any little thing that you feel that grieves the heart of the Spirit, just repent for that and come back and say, God, I'm sorry I I grieved your Spirit. I want to walk with you. I want to walk in prayer. I want to pray how you'd have me to pray. And then forgive those. Forgive others. This is a posture of compassion. And I think that we need this right now more than ever in our culture. If you agree, just say amen. We need some compassion, man. 
You know what I was, you know what I was thinking about this week during our, our annual Bible reading plan that we all do together? And everybody's like, yeah, I totally read that. Yes, amen. We all read it. Everybody online, yeah, amen, I'm read that. Well, this week in our Bible reading plan, because we're going through Acts, we have the stoning of Stephen. Did you, guys, you guys read that? I know Kelly read that, right? And Stephen gives one of the best gospel sermons right before he gets stoned. He goes through like all of the history of Israel leads us right up into the ministry of Jesus as Messiah and infuriates the religious people so much so that they decide to stone him. And what does Stephen do right before they start to throw the rocks? Forgive them. Don't hold this sin against them. What if we took that posture even with Facebook comments? You know what I'm saying? Like, forgive them, Lord. Don't hold this sin against them. They're, they're speaking from the light of revelation that they have. You know, a, a, a proverb says, every man do, does what is right in his own eyes. If they knew to do better, they would. Right? If we knew to do better, we would. And so it's coming to that point of humility. You say, man, I need forgiveness all the time. And so I'm forgiving everybody else even before they, they sin against me. I don't know. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. We, we used to joke all the time about how many Christian conferences that we see are like, like, you know, all about the victory and all about the power and all about defeating enemies. And I think those are great. But what about the conferences that are about like washing feet and getting healed <laughs> and forgiving people and releasing the spirit of offense and saying, you know what? This is not my burden to carry. God, forgive. I forgive you. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. That's how we need to be praying right now. Instead of like that fire that like burns within um, and you're like, I'm going to rebuke them publicly on Facebook. That's not discipleship. All right. It's not going to help. Lead us not into temptation. This is a prayer of dependence. Lead us not into temptation. It doesn't mean that we'll never be tempted. It just means that every time that we are, God will deliver us. We're all going to be tempted, all of us. We're all going to experience temptation. And when we do, know this, God's going to deliver you. And that's, and that's what we submit ourselves to. We say, God, we're completely dependent upon you. I want to wrap this up. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Now we're back to acknowledgement. It's kind of like where we started. We confess who this all belongs to, which is not us. It's always him. We give everything back to God. Um, in regards to that last phrase there, um, my dad told me, he said, every argument in the kingdom of God can be drawn back, like arguments in church, disconnection, can be drawn back to the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Like who's, who, 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 who's in charge? Uh, who gets the credit, right? Uh, who gets to make the decisions, right? Like it, it's, it's like arguments happen there, but at the end of the day, it's not ours. None of it is ours. Like we, we think we're in charge. We, this is God's house, right? He can do whatever he wants. He has a key. He can come in whatever you want. He can do whatever he wants. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. And it's so easy to say that when things are going wrong. It's so easy to say, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Come on, God. Take these burdens away. But how about, how about when things are going good? How about when you're getting all the compliments? How about when you're seeing all the breakthrough? How about when you're seeing all the blessing? You know, um, as, I, as I have... Um, gotten the opportunity to travel and preach some it's always nice when you finish up a message and somebody's like man that was a good word thank you so much for that word that really blessed me I mean a lot of you guys travel you do ministry stuff in here man that was anointed man thank you so much man that was awesome you're so gifted you're so talented it's so easy to get comfortable under the weight of that crown isn't it that's right I am anointed <laughs> I am God's man of power for the hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's my PayPal. <laughs> M's behind the camera. She's like, yuck. 
Um, but it's just just something just something I felt drawn to in reading through this prayer. I remember one night I was in a hotel room and 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 it was after it was after preaching and I felt conviction from the Lord and said, "Will you pray for as long after you preached as you did before you preached?" Will you pray and will you worship me for as long as after you led worship than you did before? Because so much is like, oh, God, fill me up. Get me ready. I got to minister. I got to perform. I got to work. I got a business deal. I got to close. I need the favor. I need the glory. But what happens after the event? What happens after the breakthrough? What happens after the blessing? What happens after everybody's like, oh, you're anointed. Man, you're a good business guy. You're doing really good. Well, there's a lot of favor on your life. Do you then turn it around and give it all back to God just like you did before the event? And I, I just, I, I don't know. I just started practicing that then and just... And I would almost visualize taking the crowns, all of the compliments, anything nice anybody's ever said and say, oh, Lord, it's at your feet, Lord. It's at your feet, God. It's not for us to wear. It's not for us to hold on to. It's not for us to flaunt. It's not, it's not for us to show off with the blessing that you've given us, God. But it's yours and it's worship and it's honor and it's glory and it's praise and it belongs to you. And that's what we acknowledge today. So church family and those of you literally around the world that have been like tuning in to, to YouTube, thank you guys for joining our family. It's been really cool getting to know you. Pray. Church family, pray. Pray. Don't let this just be a word today. Don't just take notes on your phone and say, man, that was a good word. You know, you know what determines whether or not the word was good? Not if you got convicted. But if you take action, right, take action, pray, church family, pray, set aside some time. We have literally made this phrase so popular here. Get to the tent. Go pray. Amen. I know you guys are praying because you guys are leaders. You guys are praying. So let's stand. We're going to pray and we're going to finish. So grateful that we got to be together today. It, It was I guess it was probably a little bit longer. Was it? No? Not really? We could have made it longer. Easily. Because we love the house of God. We love the house of God. Lord, make us like Jesus. Um, Jesus was so passionate about the house of God. That even whenever he was turning over tables. The Bible says that the disciples were reminded of the song. That said, zeal for his house has consumed me. Uh, God, let zeal for your house remind people of scripture. Like when people watch us live, Lord, let them be reminded of your word. When people watch the passion that we carry for the house of God, the passion that we carry for prayer, let them be reminded of the word. Let them be reminded of the person of Jesus. Let them be reminded uh, of who you are. And what you care about and what you love and what grieves you and what breaks your heart and what moves your heart and how you like to respond and how you like to move and how you like to forgive and how you like to heal. Lord, let our lives just just be an example of that ministry of Jesus. Lord, we say yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever and ever and ever. It all belongs to you. It's not ours, it is yours. This is not our house, it is yours. This is not our pulpit, it is yours. This is not our worship team, it is yours. This is not our ministry, it is yours. This is not anything that has anything to do with us aside from what you've given us freely by your grace. It belongs to you. And we stop and confess today, God, that you are holy and you're our Father. And we humble ourselves before you and we ask you to heal our hearts. We ask you to heal our land. We ask that you would use us as instruments of righteousness in this season, Lord, to bring wholeness to the nations of the earth, to bring revival to the nations of the earth, to bring your kingdom to the nations of the earth until all of the kingdoms of this this earth become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, is what Revelation says. And that is our assignment. We receive that today in Jesus' name. And we say we will pray. We say we 
will pray. I will pray. In Jesus' name. Everybody just say, I will pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Pray, church. We love you from all the leaders here and just this whole crew. Allison's here with the new baby hiding in the back. Uh, We love you guys so much. Stay online. There is a video coming up with some more details about what's happening at Legacy. We love you guys. God bless you big time.